Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very humbly honored, privileged, and excited today be joined by a guy who's literally I'm a fanboy of uh, Frederick Dodson. Uh, he's, he doesn't really need any kind of introduction on this podcast because many of my audience knows who you are, but uh, he has written 50 books and his newest one, which I just ripped through in, in a week. It's actually only been out, what, 10 days now. Uh, what do you know about human harvesting and investigation of the alien reptilian presence on earth is profound. Uh, I just did a huge analysis of the book and a breakdown on Tuesday night to my, one of my private membership groups. And, uh, dude, it's an honor to have you on the podcast, man. Can I just, you, for people who don't know you, can you just share a little bit about your background real quick? First of all, thanks for having me. It's an honor for me to be here, wherever here is. <laughs> I'm Trent Dotson. I've written about, uh, 50 books in different languages, seven different languages, most of these books were on consciousness and success and all the soft topics. I've been meaning to write about reptilians for 30 years, but never felt safe to do so until now. Now it kind of feels harmless and safe. It did not even just five years ago. It certainly didn't 30 years ago, because 30 years ago, I was a young kid who wanted to be successful and have a good career, which I did have. And if I, you start writing about reptilians, that, that might interfere with a so-called successful career. So I figured that after I make all the money I wanted to make, after I'm a millionaire, I can write about whatever I want. Right. <laughs> and here we are. All right. Well, I mean, again, your book is profound. And by the way, just so you know, I've read your consciousness books, of course, too. Your manifesting book, I've probably given that book to so many people. Actually, it has not been returned, the last person that has it. But I, I messaged them the other day, and they were like, oh, yeah, I have it. Um, but, uh, okay, so as I told you, I know we only have an hour. And I, I'd love for you to come back after this one, because I know this one's going to knock it out of the park. But uh, we're going to just kind of jump back and forth. So the first question is the one I asked you off the show off the air and you wanted me to ask it for the podcast. And I think it's obviously, you know, super relevant, but in 2018, you wrote a book called the Pleiades and our secret destiny. Now I want to set this up. My audience knows this, but for the record, I'm very like you, very familiar with the Pleiades and I've read as much as I could possibly get. As you said, there's a lot of new age spiritual mumbo jumbo. And then there's not a lot of real, you know, hard, what I would call scientific reference or information available. So you kind of really have to, siphon through what's available but um the barbara marciniak books even though that was channeled information and barbara's an interesting person of herself there was a lot of stuff i got from that and i a lot of after a lot of meditation and sitting in stillness listening to that um you know or just kind of going through my mind after i downloaded the information in the book um once i read your book i was blown away because there's just so much that that cross related but was there a reason that you wouldn't talk about that reptilian slash serpentine influence of this planet then versus now i know that you're saying five years ago you couldn't do it but like now the reason for you feeling more comfortable is it because you feel like the battle has been won and you could talk about what the battle is for the audience that doesn't know i sort of feel like the threat is greatly reduced and the evil influence is uh, scattered and scrambling and trying to reform. They don't know what hit him. That's that's what I feel like. Sure. Uh, sure. I, feel, I feel there's been a battle for the last seven plus years, maybe, well, actually for the last thousand couple of years, but sure, sure. it's intensified in the last years. Uh, I, I hinted at it in the Pleiades book, but I didn't have the courage to outright come out and say it. And... Uh, yeah, the, 
the battle's the battle's not won, but we're in a good place, a, a much better place. But is that is that your view too? I, I agree. I, I, I agree. It's interesting because I feel like we've been psyoped so hard since 2016 with the election when you know the the queen <laughs> the queen reptilian herself uh was over overthrown or overcome or whatever happened with you know trump and all that stuff but now you know you see what's at the end of the trump administration we almost can't we i don't know if we have to speak in veiled secrecy like you know we did at the last three years or whatever with specific <laughs> words but it seemed like even at the end though there was like a reverse psyop against trump you know he wasn't he started supporting the vax. I mean, it's it's difficult to really know what really is going on. But as you say in your books, which I love, and I am of the exact same opinion and mindset, it's really a knowing. Is that the purpose of our life here on Earth is to figure out whether we want to ascend or to descend, to evolve or to involve, and the game is like you've said multiple times in both of these books is figuring out that you want to have positive influences, that you want to uh, believe in the source. You want to believe in a benevolent creation force, you know, the source field, whatever you want to call it. There's a million names for it. Uh, and you want to align yourself with that versus the Gnostic, you know, way of we're a soul trap and, you know, it's all negative and the archons control everything. Um, it's like you said, and I agree a hundred percent, you know, there's a 50, 50 balance going on at all times and where you line your conscious or where you place your consciousness is what you're going to get. I'm glad you see that. There's so much contradictory information happening in the world that the only way to discern truth and falsehood is by intuition, really. Right. And the, never mind information. First, get your heart straight. Uh, come from your chest. And once you get your heart straight uh, and, and you feel things, and you come from the heart, that's when you're going to be able to easily discern what's going on. And one of the things I discern that's going on is that it's entirely safe for me right now to publish this book. Even after it was published, I felt no threat whatsoever, not even on the dreamscape or the astral scape or whatever. Not even, I used to have, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I was attacked. Mm -hmm. at night by all kinds of stuff. I don't feel any attack. I don't feel any threat. I think the next couple of years are going to be great. Me too. Okay. So um, I can now publish it because it's almost no longer, almost no longer relevant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I mean, yes. So I'm in total agreement with you. I mean, I've got a lot of talking points. I want to go through your book just so we can cover your book and do it justice. Um, Page 63 in the book where you, you know, you have you, one of your amazing traits as a writer and, and, you know, just so you know, I'm not nearly as prolific as you, but I have published eight books too. But one of the things that you do is that you, you have this great skill in talking about like information, you know, arcane topics, whether you're talking about reality creation and manifestation and all those things uh, to talking about this kind of stuff where you still, you still have the ability to like discern to your audience and say, you probably think this is the workings of a raving madman or, or something like that. You know, you, you mix that in and I love that kind of stuff, but you know, you, you, you also intermix incidents of your life that are bizarre to say the least of a very arcane esoteric nature. But like one of the things that really fascinated me, which I really want your uh, insight on. And now I know you're not remotely concerned about telling me is like that, that woman that you saw licking the baby. Now, do you think that she was a reptilian hybrid or an actual reptilian conscious inhabiting a human form? I know this is opinion and supposition, but like, because I've experienced this, by the way, myself, uh, I've also seen a, I came, uh, this why, is why, why, don't, why, why don't you share with the listeners? I'm okay. Sure yeah, I would love to. Uh, so I've never shared this before and I've actually had another person tell me that they saw something like this in my circle. Uh, I came I was flying on a flight from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Las Vegas. This is in the late 2000s. I want to say it was 2007 or 2008. I think it was in, in the early part of 2008. And uh, I walked into the, you know, I was like one of the first people off the Southwest cattle call flight. I was an A. And I walked into the bathroom. And as I walked into the bathroom, there was literally a man in the bathroom at the sink um, 
you know, washing his face. What, you know, he was just bent over, you know, washing it. And he looked, and he, when he looked up into the mirror, he was straight reptilian. Like I, you know, I, it was a, it was a dusk flight. And, you know, I had to, cause you know, when you see these kind of things, you kind of are like shocked a little bit, you know, there's a shock value. And so I mm. kind of like closed my eyes and, and reopened it again. And then his face went back to human and I was like, Oh, it's nothing. So then I went to the bathroom, you know, and just stood at the urinal and did my thing. And then when I came back, he was standing there at the door, staring back at me as a reptilian. Like literally like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and and I uh, didn't flinch. I'm a pretty brave, courageous dude. I mean, obviously I'm a big guy. and But I was definitely in a place of like, what in the hell is going on? Like it didn't make any threatening overtures at me, but it was kind of like looking at me like, I'm letting you know what's up. What are you going to do about it? And so I stood there. I didn't do anything. I just kind of looked at him and just kind of was like, uh, I mean, again, you're in shock. And then he just turned and walked out. Now I could have chased him, <laughs> but, but what would it matter, right? Well, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> It's a huge airport. And at that point, actually, as he walked out, all the people started coming in, you know, because it was a it was a big flight. You know, it was a it was a there was probably about 280 people on it. So, you know, about 20 or 30 men were coming in. But so anyway, I'm, I've been involved in similar situations. You also had the story of the rotting smell. Um, but like it, just your opinion, like, do, do you have any idea what it was? I think I say in the book, I have no no idea what it was. All I know is that there's stuff going on <laughs> and we need to inquire what's going on. All of yeah. us, all of us yeah. need to work together and, and take a look at our immediate community, not, not at the Vatican or the Buckingham Palace, but <laughs> our immediate community, what is going on here? Okay, not at the Pentagon, but right here in our daycare centers, at the playground and, and wherever. Just look, right. that's all I'm asking. That's That's really... Is that too much asked? Right. No, no, for sure. Okay, so all the researchers that you covered in the book, they're all profound stories. I've read all their books. I remember, I'm, I'm, I, as I emailed you, I told you, dude, we have very similar backgrounds. I'm a little bit older than you, a couple of years, but I read all the same books that you did. And at the same times, I was like, how do you go anywhere with this? You can't, this isn't coffee call, conversation. I, I, no one in my family is as awake and aware. I'm sure you say are similar things. I feel like we're kind of like star-seeded beings from, you know, pro probably the Pleiades or something like that anyway. And we're coming in here to help people wake up. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation for another podcast. But Susan Reed, Kathy O'Brien, Arizona Wilder, and James Bartley, of those four investigators slash researchers, authors, like what story to you was the most fascinating? Did you mention um, the one, uh, Susan Reed? Did you mention yeah, her? Yeah, Susan Reed, yeah. Yeah, that was the most fascinating because it turned out to be true much later, whereas right. at the time, um, people thought it's it's idiotic, you know, because there's this guy, there's this guy, John of God, everybody loves him. He's right. on the front cover of Kindred magazine. Yep. He's loved by all the New Agers. Uh, John of God is great. And here's this obscure, self-published author with a book with really horrible grammar, uh, um, saying uh john of god is a bad guy he's a reptilian he does baby farming and all that right. and when, at the t when i read the book i thought this is garbage <laughs> and actually i actually threw it away okay and then uh much much later i see on the news that uh john of god is arrested yeah i thought well, wait a minute what is he arrested for wait a minute oh this guy's connected to abramovich okay that that goes back to pizzagate okay sure. this guy's connected to oprah that goes back to jeffrey epstein okay right. and and you just connect the dots and um well, <laughs> you're well, like well, I, need you, I need to i need to revisit that book and i did repurchase that book and i read the whole thing with a much more uh much more interest Right. A book I dismissed as garbage, I threw it away, suddenly became relevant. And that's going to happen a lot in the future with a lot of authors yeah. and people we have dismissed. So it's interesting because you have like this, you know, kind of overarching background narrative of like, again, you're same as me, teenage years watching 
V or you were 11 watching V. Nobody in my family was awake enough to understand what was going on in V. I was the same way, dude. I couldn't even eat on the days that V <laughs> was on. So it's like th- th- we share this like overarching connection to this quote unquote serpentine reptilian presence on the planet. That, like you said in the book, the truth, the only thing that's true, dad. Um, so was there our higher selves that were attempting to override our fear-based ego, which is obviously doing the right thing and keeping us in survival. Cause like you said, back then it was not something that you really wanted to bring up to people because who knows how safe you would be, but is it really, was it just our higher selves just like homing in on like what was important even then, even though we were ignoring it? Oh, that's what I say in the book. That's what I think. Yeah, it has to be. Um, it's um, it's something that really interested me, but I kept ignoring it. Yeah. Reading it in private, you know, all these books in private. But no, it's nothing to do with my profession, nothing to do with my life's work. <laughs> you know, it's just totally the only thing I care about as a kid, but nothing to do at all with anything. Dude, I was the exact same way, man. I mean, I remember reading David Icke's book when I was 26, 25 or 26, and dude, my head was exploding. I mean, I still have that book here, and I go back through it every now and then. And yeah, he's got a little bit of a bent He's a little bit anti-negative. What, what, you know, it's amazing to, and credit to him now. I don't know if you've read any like last two or three of his books, but his books are all about love now. They're all okay. about unconditional love. It's actually unreal. Like he's had this dramatic shift. A lot of people, you know, tell me that they're like, oh, you got to start reading his books because I just gave up on him. I was like, he's way too negative. Uh, I, you know, I actually have a theory. This is just my pet theory and I can't prove this, but uh, I almost feel like he's actually a positive reptilian. And that he was the first guy to come out and talk about this because he was like, you know, uh, it was coordinated, you know, with the, the, let's just call it like you call it the Galactic Alliance or the Galactic Federation. There's so many different names. There's obviously people on Twitter that, you know, that are channeling Pleiadian beings. I know you know who they are. I don't have to mention them here, but uh, it's always been in my mind too, the same thing that you have in this book. And that is that the, the, the star cluster, the seven sisters, whatever you want to call it, of Pleiadians are the benefactors of humanity, maybe the actual cedars, you know, you call them the creator force. If you're familiar with the works of Ramtha, which I'm sure you are, I don't know if there's anything you've missed to write 50 books, but uh, you know, he talked about the creators like you create, you speak about them, which they were just a higher force, not as high as source, but you know, a benevolent force that was creating and seeding consciousness and seeding planets and seeding physical, uh, you know, uh, bodies and whatnot. And they're, but they're not, they're the, they're the Elohim, so to speak. They're not so source. And, and so the Bible has confused so many people because the way it was written, and obviously it's been transcribed and, and transmogrified and co-opted and corrupted and edited over these decades and centuries and millennia. But um, there was always just a misunderstanding of what who God was from a creation aspect, the source, versus the, the Elohim. And then there was, of course, Yahweh and Jehovah, which were probably, Fred, the actual serpent beings. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's really a confusing thing, but you know, you've done an amazing job in my, in my opinion in this book and like talking really declining, you know, who, the, who, the, who the wars were. In fact, I have a, I have an actual talking point. I'll just read it to you. Cause so you can just All respond right. to this. Okay. It's explain how this book. And again, I'm talking about the Pleiades and our secret destiny is about the wars of ancient extraterrestrials and interdimensional serpent against the extraterrestrial <laughs> But humanoid Pleiadians and interdimensional blue Pleiadians. So, I mean, that is an amazing characterization or characterization of what we're dealing with. And I've never seen anybody put it so well as you did. So maybe just kind of just unpack that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Right now, when I heard it, I'm like, what, what, what is he talking about? I have no idea what this guy's talking about. <laughs> in what state was I in to, to write that book? Purely high conscious, bro. Enlightened. Yeah. yeah I wrote that book in, in New Zealand. I can tell. Um, yeah. Unpack that. <sighs> You know, people always try to be, define who's who and who's on which side. And is that a positive reptilian, a negative right. reptilian, right. positive Pleiadian? Uh, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. What I do know for sure, we, we need to stick to, if things get too confusing, we need to stick to the heart. Yes. 
and, and, and to feel things from the chest. And I know for sure that the Pleiades have been a positive mm -hmm. force and influence and that these blue beings that I met were a positive force and influence. And people are like, yeah, but Fred, they could be deceiving you. And that's, <laughs> that's literally, that's not how reality works at that's all. Right. Okay. That's it's right. like a, you see an infant or a really cute cat. This cute cat could be deceiving you. This infant could be deceiving you. That is not how things work. Right. You, you, uh, there's the mind, which says this could be deceiving you, that could be deceiving you. And there's the heart, which can discern truth and falsehood. Right. So before we even go anywhere, we need to talk about truth versus falsehood. If we had training on that for all people on earth, what a beautiful world it would be. That's right. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I'm a big great student of Dr. Hawkins and, you know, the, the scale exactly. of consciousness. Exactly. Which, of course, you are as well. So, I mean, we both, we both have similar mentors in that way. Um, and, and, and like I said, man, like we have very similar paths and wavelengths about things. But another great point you have in the book is that you say, um, if you know and you're honest with yourself, you know reality and the nature of the universe. This will allow you to see the truth. In your, it is your own integrity that reveals the mystery of life to you. I, I can't disagree with that. I mean, I can't agree with anything more strongly than that statement. I mean, that's exactly, and that's, to, you know, to echo what you just said, like when people talk about negative beings or soul traps or, you know, it's all negative and the, and the, the goal is to break out. That's completely not true because as you said, that your life is the result of either positive influences or negative influences. If things are going well for you and you are manifesting a better world serving creation, doing all these amazing things, then clearly you're following the right path. Just as the opposite is also true. Yeah. You need to look at a person's life as it is. You need to visit the person, their place. I mean, people would be so surprised. You got all these, that's the problem with online and with zoom and with social media. Okay. Right. You got all these influences of people. If you were to visit them at home, you would be so surprised at some of their real lives, what they smell like and right. look like. And right. sometimes you, you wouldn't like it and you'd be shocked. You'd be like, my, I've been following this person. Okay. For, for 20 plus years, but the reality is much different than the impression they made. And that's really the problem with this whole online thing. And that's why we need to get, take back our real life. Uh, we need to take back real life meetups to some extent. We For need sure. To meet people in real. Uh, yeah. Before, before the show ends or when we're off air, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Cause I, I want to set that up with you and even to not just come to one of your, your, uh, your lectures or your presentations or your, the things you do. I know you only do stuff once a year now, but, uh, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm actually having my first ever, uh, live event in, uh, two weeks from, well, two weeks from this coming weekend here in Tampa. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, it, it's, it, I mean, obviously, you know, that that was whole part of the play of 2020 to move everything online. And so they could mm -hmm. continue with this holographic reality. Right. Just Re realize, a, realizing that's what they want. They want right. everything off. They don't want people to meet because when people meet, they exchange energy that's and they right. become more powerful. That's exactly right. Human energy field uh, manipulation. Yep. hundred percent. Um, so a couple other questions I had from the reptilian book, which I think are really good. And, and you, you know, you really put this together in ways that I've never seen anybody. And I do also have a personal story about this. So I went to Morelia, Mexico two years ago for a wedding. My wife is uh, mother is from um, Cuyacan way down South. And so she's like half, half Anglo, half Mexican. And we went down to this like old school, authentic uh, Mexican wedding. And dude, in this town in Morelia, Mexico, they have these, gothic i would call like cathedrals that were supposedly built in the 15th century and frederick if you would see one of these things like first off you're in this like you know very decrepit town in the middle of central mexico and it's like you see this architecture and you're like i mean it's staggering when you see it you're like <laughs> what in the hell 
is going on. Mm -hmm. And then you're looking around at all of the people, the indigenous, and it's, you know, a mix, a mix, a mix of Mexican indigenous, which are like Indians. And then there's like, you know, the Mexicans that were actually from like, um, you know, Northern Northwest Matsalan and stuff like that. So it's a mix of people and culture, but this was in the middle of 2021 when you remember when the COVID debacle was going on and everyone was wearing masks, but literally this town, seemed to me and i said this to my wife at the time you know and again i have no problem saying this just like you now there's no uh, fear of reprisal or anything like that but i i literally told my wife as i was looking around watching these people walk around that they were under mind control that i said there was something going on underneath this giant catholic you know cathedral whatever this is and that it's reptilian in nature you know mind control in nature you know again the whole uh parasitic energy source and then again, you know, lining up with your books and reading your books, you talk about what's going on underneath all the churches and that just searching a little bit on Google, there's, it's not even blocked. It's not covered up. Like almost every massive church or religious, um, you know, building on this planet has tunnels underneath it. So the question that I have for you is, uh, are these just the, you know, quote unquote, inner earth zones where the serpent race, you know, is inhabiting and then they come up to the church to feed or get intelligence or, I mean, or is it just ways for them to operate in secret from church to church? And then the other question on that is, and this is even a bigger question is, did they create all of the Abrahamic religions? <laughs> <laughs> I got to put you on the spot, my bro. I feel I feel sorry for the listeners. They don't even know what's going on if you haven't read my book. Um, Tunnels Under Churches is one of the topping points of the book, talking points of the book, okay? So the question is, is there a subterranean presence? My definite answer to that is yes, there is 100%. a subterranean presence. It is physical and spiritual, and I write about it in my book, Levels of Heaven and Hell, by the way. Um, and is that connected to the tunnels? Yes, most certainly. Um, there's been, I wrote an article once called uh, Trade with Subterranean People in the Middle Ages, where I go into detail on ancient documents that report of the church doing business with subterranean beings, transporting goods and even trafficking people right. through tunnels into the inside of the earth. All of that is historic. So there are, there are civilizations inside earth. I don't care how outrageous it sounds. It, it, it's just so. People mm. need to, again, people need to look what's going on right below their feet uh, including military underground bases, including the, the entire subterranean world. And what was the other question? Oh, are the Abrahamic religions uh, created by reptilians as a plot or conspiracy to enslave people? My personal view on that is no, the Abrahamic religions are positively intended originally and diverted by by the bad guys so there's a lot of stuff that happens on earth that's positively intended and then it's diverted nearly every positive movement is eventually diverted hijacked yeah. you know for, for hijacked first you get um women's rights and yep. then women's that's a positive thing and then it's diverted into <laughs> man-hating feminism or you get um you get jesus right uh teaching healing and empowerment and then it's somehow di diverted to a weird sunday ritual where you right uh, e eat a little flake uh, and, and, it's insane, and sip right? a little wine which has absolutely nothing to nothing do with to what do jesus with did N nothing whatsoever right so uh the the intention is obviously positive and the energy is so high that they can't change it but they can divert it there's there's rules in the universe where you're not allowed to certain things are not allowed so they, they're allowed to divert it but they can't they can't really change it and if you look at the scriptures themselves mm -hmm. of all these religions even of a uh, buddhism and yeah the eastern and, yeah the eastern ones uh, um they're different from the actual practice 
So that, that it again calls for discernment. Does that answer your two questions? And my question is, what's re, what's your view on those two questions? I, I agree a hundred percent. It's interesting because yes, so it all goes back to having a pure heart to discern, right? And we gain a pure heart by meditation and introspection and working with going within. And so few people today, Frederick, are able to go within. Uh, they're so riddled with anxiety. They're so addicted to their screens. You know, it, it, the drunk monkey mind is constantly in the just, it's just nonstop chatter and they, they just cannot attain stillness. And, you know, I always tell people like, it's not about sitting in the lotus position and, you know, going into two hours of deep meditation. I mean, if you can, that's amazing, but you know, it, it's, it's just being able to become introspective, con contemplative, uh, sitting in nature. I mean, obviously just sitting in nature is amazing. I mean, I learned, you know, from the Barbara Marciniak books probably 10 years ago that if one just goes into nature with no technology and nothing, no intention other than just to listen and observe that the birds singing and chirping and doing their thing will actually change their tonality. Cause again, as you know, we're all one, we're all connected to calm your central nervous system. Hmm. And very few people know that. And I've been telling people that for years now. And I, you know, I say, Hey, you think it's woo woo, whatever, then go try it yourself and see what happens. But you, you know, you have to go to a place where you literally are not looking at your phone or doing something else or having on Bluetooth heads, you know, and, and truly listen to the birds or, you know, listen to the sounds of nature and watch what happens. But it's a fact. I mean, I've, I've done it myself numerous times, more than 10 times in my life, but I've had plenty of people that have done it and they've all come back to me and they say, oh my God, it's right. interesting. It's interesting you say, Sue, because one of the major reasons we are moving right as we speak, we're packing up, stuff is being packed, is because we miss the sound of birds. Yeah. We used to wake up in the morning and there were birds all over the place. And ever since we live here in Florida, we don't hear them. I don't know why, but it's weird to us. And it's like there's something swampy going on uh reptilian alligatory going on so we want to hear the birds <laughs> listen man if there's a place that is a fortress for them it's the usa now i mean let's face it i mean they control everything here uh it was very difficult for me to come back from mexico mexico is not without its problems there's massive corruption there uh in the government but um man the air is clearer there's no sp spraying in the skies there's no all the food in mexico is farm to table it's all organic you don't taste any chemicals the united states is like right now i would say you know just as you said in the book you know the, the atlantis fell it's almost like atlantis obviously the new atlantis was designed in the same way uh you know to become this gigantic technocratic you know, glo obviously it's a global power, obviously as a military arm, but uh, this giant technocratic society that's controlled by, you know, techn technological overlords. And that's, and that's kind of where it's at now, but you know, it, it's, 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 I don't know where it's going, Frederick. I mean, we could probably even ask her or just discuss that, you know, but to me, eventually we'll have to break free of the technology that, you know, there'll have to be groups of us. And, and again, maybe there is going to, we can talk about Ascension. I'd like to get what your definition of Ascension is because you write about it in all your books. And obviously I believe in it too, but um, without that being some sort of a shift, you know, I would see us, people like us who want to preserve humanity. Cause I know you're also anti-transhumanism and you write a real, you have a really good explanation of what transhumanism is in your books, but um I th I see us having to break off from this, you know, like living in almost colonies or communes or places like that where we all, you know, reinvest into our human, um, you know, clairsentient, clairaudient, telekinetic, telep telepathic powers that you that you and I know we have that we've just chosen to forget because we've adopted the reptilian stuff. And if we just eventually break completely free of it, which I think we have to, you know, if they do create a social credit system and take people like me and you and say, Oh no, you guys are persona non grata. <laughs> you can't receive money anymore. I mean, I'm not saying that will happen, but you know, that's what they keep trying to instill. Uh, maybe we will have to break off and, and create our own societies and maybe really, really truly build or rebuild a Lemuria. Yeah. If that happens, I'm going to pull the plug. Yeah. I, I prefer it not to happen. I prefer to believe that there's enough people awake 
I prefer to believe there's a pushback. There has been a pushback, actually, massive pushback. If we hadn't pushed back, we'd be on our next uh, um, dose of COVID and vaccines right, right now. Okay, right. had we not pushed back, there's been loss, endless lawsuits that we've won. Yep. Um, so good things are happening, but you know how people tend to get complacent. And I, I guarantee you, if we get apathetic and complacent again, they'll be right back. They're, they're like, um, <laughs> they're subterranean. They go into hiding for a while and they're like, right. okay, people are complacent again. Let's go back up and, and give it another try. Give it another go. You know, the, the new world order, the, um, the whole social credit system, that's yeah, what yeah, they yeah. want. And we can, we're more powerful than them, infinitely more powerful than them. Totally. It, it is through our own complacency that these things are going to happen. Do we have to give up tech? I don't know. I, I think there's a better tech, uh, better technology. I think this technology we have is set up to surveil and right. data mine and control. Totally. 100% agreement. I mean, I mean, you, you, that, you, all you have to do is work with very high level technology people, which I'm blessed to connect with, and they can show you how everything goes back to one node. You know, even like, like guys like you and me, you know, in our worlds now and stuff like that, like if the, if the, if the payment processors decide that they can't, that they're not going to pay Frederick and Jay anymore, you know, there's alternative people out there. Right. But like, when you really look into those guys, <laughs> they all still go back to this. Yeah, exactly. They got one payment node. Right. So you're right. I mean, I mean, all we can do is manifest a, a better reality and, and, and continue to lead by example and project this kind of information into the ether now, because as you said, it seems a lot safer. I mean, I, I, I truly feel that, there is not going to be repercussion or reprisal for me to put this, you know, this message out there. Clearly you felt the same by putting the book out there. Um, more and more people are waking up to this sort of information. I mean, as I said in my private group on Tuesday night, and I put a message on Monday that I was going to be breaking down your book with another person who's also read it, who's a mentor. I mean, a mentee of mine. Um, and we blew, I mean, we broke this down in literally it was a three hour call. And there were 70 people that were watching it live. And now, you know, a couple hundred have watched it and every single person has been positive. There's been a couple of people in my group that are new agers and they're like, it's love and light. You can't talk about the reptilians. You know what I mean? And we were like, uh, okay, well, you know, that's where you're going to be consciously. That's your conscious. But you know, that leads me to a statement that you make that I posted, you know, as a talking point. Um, and it's that I'm looking for it right now about fear. Um, you have a quote that the only humans that the reptilians have power over are the humans that are terrified. Yeah. yeah. People, new agers do say that, uh, if I post stuff like this or write stuff like this, I'm fear based <laughs> and, and the, the word fear based triggers me now. Okay. Fear is fear based. I said, I'm not afraid. Look at me. Look at my eyes. Do I right. look afraid to you? Right. I'm writing about reptilians. Um, uh, but I'm not afraid to write about him. I'm not afraid to put out the, in fact, not putting it out the times I didn't put out the information. That's when I was afraid. Yeah. And, and truthfully, <coughs> excuse me, the fear base is like a reverse psyop. Like the, it really is like they, they want you to say that, or they're trained when I say they meaning, you know, the, the, the called the parasitic energy, but like they entrain the people, as you say, in the, both of your books and both of these books, and I'm sure in many others um, that I haven't read of yours. Um, it's part of the system of like thinking that, as you say, that the greatest weakness that we have as humans is that we feel like we're powerless. And we have such great power, but only when we into it that we know who we are, that, you know, that again, we, we can become as gods. I mean, again, you know, the lower, you know, creator gods, you know, you talk about we're not, we're like one consciousness level lower than the Pleiades and Pleiades came down one level than Sirius. And it's like, you know, you have the whole diagram that was shown to you when they came to you. Um, and you feel that that's kind of like the essential uh, model. Um I agree. I, it, 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 it's interesting, but, but people have to go, like you said, you got to come from the center. And when you're not in fear, you're not going to come back at people with negative thoughts. 
you know, you're not going to come at, you know, like you and I, we, we publish content, we're creators or whatever. And, you know, people from the public that don't know us will say something crazy or negative. And, you know, in the early part of some, I'm sure of our career, we would want to go back to them and say, Oh, well, you know, respond to it or whatever. But, you know, you eventually get to a place of like, you know, non, non judgment or non duality. And you just kind of like, that's cool. You know, your opinion's your opinion or whatever. But the truth is, is that People are nothing more than, and you know this, but people are nothing more, all of us are nothing more than a projection of how we feel about ourselves inside. And so when we go back out negative, it's because we're in fear. Right. We don't need to back out. We don't need to back off. What would really help everyone is if we have close, a much, much closer look at every single thing. We, we turn every stone in our communities, in our society and find that there's so much going on that we did not choose, did not decide. This is essentially the whole reptilian book goes back to reality creation, which right. is what I actually teach us deciding what happens in our reality. Okay. There's so many things that no human being, that's why I wrote the book. No human being would ever decide. I know so many people um, 99.9% .9 of the people I've met, and I've met tens of thousands, are good people. Right. So if, if all these people are good, who's doing all the bad stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not it's you. Interesting. It's not me. Yeah, it's, you know. I mean, it's it's an interesting question. Um, that's actually, that, that, that statement leads up to a, a good question for you to just to kind of unpack it for both of us really is, for, from, from a from a reptilian so what is a reptilian in the connotation of religious doctrine right like you because you mentioned this and obviously i'm familiar with this but you know we the, obviously the christians even the jews and the islamic the muslims you know they they understand fallen angel concept but is that really the easiest way to try to explain it to people that you know what people perceive as demons or discarnated entities are truly actually the reptilian beings <coughs> Excuse me. I equate the two in my book, like uh, fallen angels, reptilians, entities. But all of these are labels to try yeah. to describe something, an evil influence. Mm -hmm. I've seen him with scales. I've seen entities of different types. Um, I think they're reptilians. But again, it's... a What's the evil influence? If humans are mostly well-intended and just want to know who they are and how to get by and what's going on and where they're from, that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's okay. That's that's all we want to know. Okay, so so what's the evil influence? And if you look at the topic for a long time, you do find kind of a fallen angel reptilian vibe. Now I don't know if that's uh, influenced through all the mythology that I've read. I've, I've spent my life reading mythology and religion. Me too. You know, and uh, I could say, well, I'm, I'm biased. But uh, basically, all the ancients said the same thing. The yeah. only, it's only in the last hundred years that we've strayed <laughs> away from all that and are like, oh, fallen angels don't exist, reptilians don't exist. None of this exists. Here's what exists. Pfizer exists. Uh <laughs> scientism yeah the, the cult yeah, of scientism yeah. yeah yeah are you using therapeutic peptides are you a new user maybe an advanced user maybe you're considering starting peptides highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my pdf and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides Yeah. yeah. So this is nothing new. The, the the reptilian stuff is nothing new. It's only in the last hundred years that we've been told that uh, this is the science and the science is the universe is pointless. Everything is a coincidence, which is <laughs> total garbage, you know, basically. Well, what's crazy about that is, yes, and it's it's very obvious to me, as it is you, that this, again, this, call them the parasitic entity, the serpent race, whatever you want to call them, demons, reptilians, whatever. Uh, the negative influence. They are, as you said, and again, in very, very well, well elucidated and explained, 
And like I said, I have like 40 pages to get through the end of the book, but I'm pretty good. I'm pretty confident. I know where you're going with it. Um, there's been many interruptions of the reptilians. Like you said, they hide in waiting, you know, when, when a time isn't right or they're vanquished or put down, you know, they go and they hide and they wait for consciousness to descend enough where they can come back. And, and obviously, like you said, they came back again, 13,000 or whatever it was, uh, the 30,000 years ago, and then they left and then there was a flood and then they came back again, you know, was it 6,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago, whatever. I know you wrote it in the book. I'm losing the time range right now. And again, time is all, it you know, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, exactly. you can't even, you can't even tell is. anymore. They've exactly. manipulated time so much. You... Dude. Well, you know, that's the thing, Frederick though. And that's an interesting topic, which I didn't want to talk about with you tonight, but they're hacking the timelines, right? Like we know they have the ability to manipulate the space time continuum, um, so it's like time is like it doesn't exist outside of the third density or third dimension anyway. But bottom line is they're moving things around. They're moving in and out. They travel through wormholes, portholes, spirals, whatever. But um, what's weird is that they have getting back to what you were saying, they have started to delete history. As you know, young children now today don't even learn anything about World War II. They don't learn anything about World War I. There's nothing even about Vietnam. Like everything just picks up now, I think, like 2000. Like if you're a kid now in school, history is going back to 2000. I'm not kidding you. you know, I have a 15 and 13-year-old daughter. They learn nothing. Some people so, don't even know about 9-11. Right, right. So, so, right. so they're, they're eradicating history for a purpose – and as you said, it's most mostly we can see this now. There's a correlation in the last hundred years, and as you said, in the last seven to ten to fifteen, with the you know the explosion and the adoption of social media and the internet, it's it, it's now almost at like a geometric speed and rate that they're eliminating history, the past. And as you know, well, I think it was was it Woodrow Will not it was it, uh, Woodrow Wilson or it was no, it was actually um, what's his name from uh, the Britain, the Prime Minister of Britain. You know, he said Churchill. Churchill, he said that, you know, the fastest way to, to blight a people is to make them misunderstand the past, right? So without any understanding of the past, they're doomed to, to, to repeat the mistakes of, you know, their, their progenitors. And so it's like, that's where it's going. It's seeming like they're just dumbing down. They're creating a slave race, which is, I think, what they've always done, as you've elucidated in your books. And, and here we are now again at the beginning of 20, 20, almost 2024, and we're going into this like – there's, there's, well, there's two options, right? Like there's the singularity, which is, as you know, the man machine merge, the transhumanist movement, which is the Ray Kurzweil's and the Peter Diamandis and all of these, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> not our friends. And then you've got people like us that are talking about this advanced creating a golden age. You know, we have all of this amazing reality creation tools. You know, there's all sorts of amazing of, of, of things out there that are resonant technologies that people can utilize now. So it's like, there's just, it just seems like it's a bifurcation. Yeah. The, and great, di the great divergence. The great divergence, if you want to call it that. But it's like, it seems like there's still a chance that, one of the two could become the most dominant pathways. And again, if we, you know, listen to our friend here, he talks about 80% vibrating below the line of integrity and that, you know, all it has to happen is that we get 15 to 20% people vibrating at 300 or higher conscious level and you end the matrix, you end all of this dissonance. But I don't know. I, I, I feel like, it, you know, there's still a balance or the ba we're, we're still hanging in the balance as to where we go. I mean, do you kind of have a feeling? I mean, I know you already said that you see the next two to three years being amazing. So do I. For me, but, but not, not, not for people in general, just for okay. me. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. But I mean, like, do you see a possibility where we can overthrow the matrix or, you know, to the point of your books, is it never designed to overthrow the matrix because all this place is, is a school for souls. And the, the game is the way out is within and it's an individual game. Well, it's a great question. Everybody should be asking and talking about, even if we don't have an answer right now, that is a fantastic question. All you need to do is go outside and take a walk to realize <laughs> that uh, we're not doing that well, that there is an agenda to tire people, to wear them out, because people, especially here in, in America, look worn out, right? you know, um, tired, like they've been over-medicated, fed poison. So you realize um, there's a really good chance that the New World Order is going to succeed and that we're all going to be enslaved. 
And there's also a really good chance that we're going to make it, we're going to overcome. And that's why we do the work we do, because we care, both you and me, we care, and we'd like to see the other option, the better world. And the best way to do that is by working on myself. I can't necessarily force others to be better, but I can set an example. Now, if I go for a walk, I can set an example of somebody who looks healthy, who's got his stuff together. You know, he's, um, I'm pretty self-sufficient, uh, pretty prosperous, pretty healthy, pretty clear. And that's the example I want to set. And that inspires people to see, oh, look what's possible. It's possible to, to be like Fred, you know, or we can watch movies from the 1970s where everybody was skinnier. Just as an example, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, so obvious what the what the agenda is, and then there's a counter agenda. We are that counter agenda. So, do you think? Last couple of questions, because I want to be respectful of your time. Do you think? Thank you. <laughs> and you know me, I'm going to come from out in left field. But do you think that you and I are Pleiadian consciousness beings, and? we are now awakening to our true purpose and mission because again, in the Barbara Marciniak book, she says that, and you say this by the way too, and this is why I've kind of had a, I had to ask this question to you just to pop you at the end. Um, you, you very, very often mention that like, if you're reading this book, you're one of us. She did the same thing in her books. She said, if you're reading this book, you're part of the family of light. And then she goes on and through a couple of the other books to say that, in fact, you're probably of Pleiadian consciousness yourself. So do you think that beings like us have just, you know, again, chosen to incarnate in here uh, maybe, maybe many times, but our mission is to awaken others, not through proselytizing and preaching and, you know, standing out on the corner and giving sermons, but by doing but by setting an example. Yeah, yeah. By set, setting an example. Yeah which is much more powerful than telling people what to do, just right. being the thing, you know, being right. it, showing it. Embody the thing uh, instead of preaching it. Because if you embody it, that's how kids learn. And, and I have to see all these humans as kids because they are kids in consciousness. Are we Pleiadian? Uh, we might very well be Pleiadian. We are definitely, I mean, if you read a book like this, you can't possibly... Uh, understand, perceive, or even attract the book into your life if it's not already within you. It right. takes one to know one. So anybody who's read a book of mine, I like to hang out with because I know they have some of that within themselves as well. Um, that, that's, that's, to me, that's obvious. Are we higher consciousness? I guess I need to admit that, yes, we are. And, you know, something I've denied for a long time. I've always said to people, no, I'm just a normal kid trying to make sense of things. I'm just a kid born in Indiana. I'm nothing special. But maybe that's not true. Maybe we are imbued with a mission. Are you an Indiana fan or a Kentucky fan? Because depending on your answer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, you know, I was born in northern Kentucky, too. I, I, I'm from Indiana, and I'm a fan of neither. <laughs> You're like, bro, I'm not a sports ball guy. No, I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting, um, that you say that though, because yeah, I mean, uh, say I'm again, very similar. Uh, you have to lead by example. I'm also, I father the same way, you know, I'm not a, you, you, another great comment you have in the book. And I think it was in this one was that you talk about, you know, uh, the controlling father, the controlling parent is part of the reptilian consciousness. And the loving, leading by example, you know, open, coming from the heart center parent is the Pleiadian. I mean, and for, for lack of a better term, the loving conscious, but really Pleiadian, you know. So it's it's interesting because, you know, we always are talking about or we're taught by, and I got one last question for you, then I'll let you go. Well, we, we need to start seeing things as reptilian culture versus Pleiadian culture. Yes. Or, you know, it's a culture. Well, and so that's what I was going to say. So it's like the reptilian, and we know this from just science, right? We have a reptilian brain, and then we have the the, the, the mammalian aquatic heart center, you know, the, the, uh, the parts of our body. So it's like we really are seated with both. 
And the question, and, and again, this is in the Barbara Marciniak books, and who knows what the answer is, but it seems like, Fred, that there were Pleiadian reptilians and Pleiadian humans. And so there's a mix, again, of you know the whole aspect of duality. There's always good with evil and evil or, or light with dark. There's There's got to be a mixture of both. And so I feel like really our goal here, and this goes to the last question of you uh, or to you, and again, this is an overarching theme in all of your books, and I'm in total agreement with this, by the way, that um, the reason there's negative entities here, negative reptilians or you know parasitic or archontic you know influences, is because this is a school for souls. This is a, as I always say, like our, our one of our purposes here as spiritual energy beings inhabiting physical avatar bodies is to evolve and grow the soul. And if we didn't have the negative influences, however they are, whoever they are. We wouldn't be able to evolve. And you make that awesome point that says, like, well, what would be the value of not growing, you know, in earth density if there was no negative influences? Yeah, it's it's adventurous. And um, I, I love it. You know, even as a kid, when I watched V, I loved the show as negative as it was because you get to be the hero. Right. You get to, you get to grow. <laughs> The hero who, who sees through their schemes. You need to be so much. You need to be a detective. You need to be a good father. Uh, they force you, the so-called evil forces you to be a good father, a good detective, a good researcher, a good writer. Um, that's where self-improvement comes from through the, not only, I'm not saying it only comes through the negative, but um, the evil forces you to choose who you are and which way you want to grow, whether you want to be your animal self and succumb or your angel self. That's right. That's exactly right. The reptilian consciousness or the angel consciousness. Um, all right. So last question. It's the same to all of this. It's uh, we know that the earth is if we if we assume the earth is a, a place for lower consciousness beings, all of us to in, to incarnate and then to learn and grow from their mistakes. What do you think ascension is like ultimately? Is it? Is it transcendental graduation, moving from a higher plane of density, say third to fourth to fifth to sixth or something? Or is it something beyond that where it's actually you've reached a level of progress where you don't have to incarnate in the third dimension anymore? These are some good questions. What is ascension? <laughs> Great questions. Fantastic questions. Good podcast. I got to say. <laughs> what is asc Ascension is uh, individual and collective. Individually, uh, it's becoming a step-by-step -step better version of you, stronger, clearer, more aware, more healthy, more more energy and collectively ascension is taking back a planet that was given up to us according to the abrahamic religions given to us to attend to taking it back through the points that i mentioned in my book which are lawfare citizen journalism small business uh, parallel economy that's ascension on a collective scale so there's individual ascension that can always happen, fortunately, and collective ascension is a, is a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you don't see – I could keep you here all day, and I promise I'm going to stop. But, like, um, you, you mean like different dimensions? Absolutely. But that's, that's for much, much, much later. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. There's, um, I think this uh, earth thing is just a, a short stop we've become kind of stuck in this earth thing. Sure. It's just, it's just a short stop on what was supposed to be a much longer journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you think people like us, and there are many now consciously when, when our physical body expires in this current time and place, or, you know, this incarnation of space time, are we going somewhere else? Because the, the interesting question is, or bigger question is, do people like us, because of who we are, come back to continue to lead, inspire, create? I don't know. 
but I do yeah. know that it pays. Yeah, well, it pays off. What I do know, though, is it, I got to look at what I do know. Okay, I, I don't know that, but I do know that it pays off to be aware when you die, to have enough energy and awareness so that you don't make any mistakes in the afterlife. Yeah, yeah. that's what I want. I want to die in full consciousness and calm. Not, um, oh my God, what's going on? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, but clear. The reptilian mind control must continue. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got you, man. Bro, this has been absolutely phenomenal. Let me throw your stuff up here real quick here. Um, so guys and gals, support the amazing people that come on this podcast. I mean, this is definitely one of my best podcasts for sure. We talked about some questions that very few people really want to traverse and discuss. Uh, but realitycreation.org, I mean, guys and gals, honestly, like his books are profound. He has 50 of them. There's not one that is bad. Uh, you're, I mean, as I tell people, you're like one of the great scholars of all of humanity. I don't want to rank you in any timeline or whatever that, and, and again, you're awake and aware and a lot of scholars are, you know, or quote unquote academics are not, and you're, you're definitely one of those people. And then also, uh, you can follow him on Twitter, which, which is really weird, which, which proves why social media is bad, that they were blocking me and you from finding each other on Twitter, which is absolutely insane because I had absolutely no idea that you're on Twitter. And I've been putting out resident messages on Twitter for like three or four years and completely shadow man, <laughs> suppressed, just like you. And so when I found you the other day on Twitter, it was like, no way. Like, how is he on Twitter? And I don't know him. That's how it works, right? Like, they're not going to let you know. I keep hearing that story. I didn't know you were on Twitter. I didn't even know you had a YouTube account. When I looked for you on YouTube, I didn't find you. Uh, yeah. um, I didn't know you wrote. Uh, wow. I didn't. There's there's one guy who recently said, I didn't know you wrote two follow ups to your book levels of energy. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's crazy. They have the power to somehow feed content to yeah. people and, and block out everything yeah. else. That is that's insane. Well, here's something that even more insane is the, this proves that our theory that we can present this information to the universe now is, is, is right. Because Fred in the past, in just the last three or four years, I would be getting a transmission block from some of the things that we said, they would scramble the actual transmission because again, the Absolutely. AI, yeah, the AI is listening to code words. And so when they hear stuff, even this isn't live, this is just me and you recorded before we publish it live, but they would scramble the transmission all the time. Something's changed. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So it's amazing, man. Well, listen, man, I'm so grateful to have you on here today. I hope that we can do this again when the time permits. Uh, I wish you well in your travels. I hope that you and I can connect before you do leave. So uh, let me just say again, ladies and gentlemen, support the amazing folks that come on the Jay Campbell podcast, uh, buy his books, go to realitycreation.org, follow him on Twitter. And remember, Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.